Hello, welcome to Walk in the Park. My name is Tony Ingram, and this is August 9th, 2017, Nagasaki Day, 72 years ago. There's a peace park over there. I imagine they've had some things going on today. Hopefully we don't repeat that kind of experience with uh, the kind of showdown we're having with North Korea right now. Very reckless times. Just thought I'd say that. Anyway, we're going to uh, see. This is you can see all my shows, all my episodes. Walk in the park. Go to my website, walkinthepark.tv, and I've got them all there. You just search uh, whatever you want. You can scroll down. You can see uh, different episodes from the past. And you can also watch this show. This is um, um, on Pegasus Public Access Television in Ithaca, New York, Channel 13. So you can also see when you go on my website, as soon as I get this show up on there, you'll be able to see the full cable cast schedule by the weekend. Okay, so this time we're going to go to Cayuga Lake. And uh, this is East Shore Park. It's a uh, cute little park. It's just a, a, oh, and just two or three acres or so. Um, right north of the uh, Cornell Sailing Center on Route 34 going up the east shore of the lake and uh, it's a very popular place people go down there and they sit on the rocks they fish they read a lot of people swim there but there's no swimming as it says there because there's no lifeguards and that sort of thing but there's another reason we'll get into in a minute why swimming is even particularly hazardous here's some folks enjoying the park uh, fishing in the lake and here's the view north along the east shore you can only see about 10 miles or so of the lake at this point because the lake bends. But there's a cool uh, interpretive sign there that explains a little bit more about the lake. And actually, I used to be on the town of Ithaca Conservation Board, and we put this this panel together. And it's uh, that was several years ago, and, and it's standing up well. So, um, But uh, there are some things going on in the lake now that uh, have been uh, distressing a lot of people. And there's a sign up on the pavilion that's there. This is obviously a handmade sign, but uh, let's see, what does that say? Do not swim. So there's an emphasis here. Let's see if I can get in and read it a little bit more closely here. They've written, Cayuga Lake has harmful algal blooms, H-A-B, in her. These H-A-Bs are very toxic to people and pets. Please do not swim here, even if you cannot see the green blooms with your eyes. You can read more online about other places nearby that are safe to swim in for you, your kitties, and your pets. You go to dec.ny.gov website for more information. You can also go to the health department site and uh, several other sites that have information about it. Here's a more formal sign that was put up that has a lot of information on it about the harmful uh, algae blooms, blue-green algae cyanobacteria is the the technical name of it and here's actually a picture that uh, uh, Ithaca resident named Adam Pearl put up on Facebook and showing uh, this shimmering algae uh, in the lake somewhere so uh, I'll, I'll be showing you a lot of pictures of the blue green algae and how to distinguish it from normal green algae which is harmless but um, here's a picture here of it that uh, was from I think the DEC let's see what we got here Let's see. Hello. Put that up there. Some here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. What are harmful algal blooms? HABs. Most algae are harmless and are an important part of the food web. Certain types of algae can grow quickly and form blooms, which can cover all or portions of a lake. Even large blooms are not necessarily harmful. However, some species of algae can produce toxins that can be harmful to people and animals. Blooms of algal species that can produce toxins are referred to as harmful algal blooms, or HABs, which usually occur in nutrient-rich waters, particularly during hot, calm weather. And the caption on this photo is, algal blooms may have the appearance of spilled green paint. That's one of the, one of the uh, appearances. Now, remember that picture I showed you looking up the lake like this? Well, this is one on another day. I didn't take this one. This was uh, taken by the Finger Lakes Land Trust, actually. And that is showing the, the algal bloom there. And I ran into Rich Schock, who is the park manager for the, all the town of Ithaca parks, and he told me, yeah, this is what it looked like several feet out into the water of this, uh, this murky green stuff. So um, let's see. This is what the Land Trust said about that. Toxic algae bloom in the southeastern shore of Cayuga Lake as of 4 p.m. Wednesday, August 2nd. Well, this is a week later. 
Increased nutrient runoff into the lakes, including soil erosion from farm fields and contamination from lake shore septic systems, is raising the risk of toxic algae outbreaks across the region. While all of the factors contributing to outbreaks are not completely understood, the increasing intensity of storm events is washing more nutrients into the lakes. And we've certainly had that this summer, lots of storms, putting all 11 Finger Lakes at risk. Outbreaks threaten human health as well as the region's tourism economy, thus the stakes are high to counter these threats as development pressure increases. Hmm, that's interesting. So, so this is just an example, it happens to be in Buttermilk Glen, it was one of the high water events that we have, which have increased and the state parks uh, uh, are taking that into account that there are going to be more of these kinds of flash floods. And my last program on, on uh, episode 172 was about the flash floods we've had this summer, so you might want to go take a look at that online. Um, so anyway, let's go back to the, um, uh, the issue of uh, protecting our watershed. This is the, um, well here, I'll read it for you here. This is from the Finger Lakes Land Trust. The Finger Lakes Land Trust, FLLT.org, FLLT.org, is working to buffer our streams, create new wetlands, and save our last undeveloped shorelands. You can see our top 10 conservation strategies in our free report, Lakes, Farms, and Forests Forever, at FLLT.org slash top 10. So you can find that on the website. And this is, they also obviously have uh, hard copies of it. So the whole watershed is involved in they don't, we, like I said, we don't know everything about these algal blooms, but certainly big inflows of nutrients into the watershed. Now, this is showing the watershed of Cuga Lake and then several of the other Finger Lakes adjacent without their watersheds outlined. But it's a pretty big watershed. It's uh, got 785 miles. It's about 12 times the size of the lake itself. And what goes on in the watershed goes into the lake. So uh, that's a big deal. So protecting the watershed runoff and with special when with these these uh these big storm events a lot more of them now uh at least this year anyway last year was the opposite where we had uh, one of the most severe droughts we've ever had all these extremes are um, i won't say they're caused by global global warming but they are exacerbated by it that is certainly known we tend to have more storms more um not necessarily more storms but you have yeah maybe you do there's more water in the atmosphere more energy in the atmosphere and and uh um so you get more water coming down in big storm events. In fact, in the in the Northeast, we've had a lot more. I talked about that in the last episode. There's a lot more, uh, something like a 74% increase in storms of two inches or more of heavy rain over the last 30 years or so. Anyway, um, let's go to the next picture here. This is um, this is from the Cuga Lake Watershed Network. And this is a picture of the HAB. The harmful algal bloom. If you have access to an area of our beautiful lake that is not publicly managed and if you wonder if it is safe to go in, ask yourself, is the water clear or murky? Are any of the telltale bright green algae forms visible? If the water is clear and no vivid green algae are present, then enjoy the water. But watch for changes because a bloom may arise rapidly. Do not ingest lake water and do not drink lake well water even if you are doing the full-blown home treatments process. You can't kill the toxins that are emitted by this toxic algae, this blue-green algae. It, uh, it's a poison. It's not a, uh, you can kill the organisms, but you can't kill the poison. So uh, uh, don't drink the lake water. Now, I don't know why people with cottages along the lake, I used to live along the lake for a little while and drew most of my water from the lake. I don't know what they're doing, but um, maybe they can tell us. But but it's not all bad now. Things are, um, I guess the rain is, is, is uh, let off a bit. It's not quite as intense as it was last month and the month before. Um, and so the algae is dissipating for, let's see, we're gonna, I'll get to that in a second here. Let's, this, is, um, this is the Cayuga Lake floating classroom. And they're using this boat uh, right now. Their other boat, the handle is uh, still uh, in the shop, I guess. And this was posted on Facebook on um, the 6th, three days ago. Um, Many thanks again to Water to Wine Day Tours for supporting the floating classroom. We do not serve wine during programs despite that sign. So anyway, uh, they have a group on there from the Learning Web, I think it was. And here they're saying, this is what we want to see in this concentrated plankton net sample. Blue-green algae, or aka HABs, 
would rise to the top and create a green film. No visual evidence of that happening. And we confirmed under microscopes. So at least where they tested, the water uh, was clearer three days ago. And I, um, the, now all of the, the three state parks and some of the other municipal parks around Cuyahoga Lake that have waterfront areas, swim areas, um, were closed in recent, uh, uh, well, you know, last part of last month and recently, early this month, because of algal blooms, these blue-green algae, harmful uh, algal blooms in the lake. Um, so, Tagantic Falls um, State Park, Cuyahoga Lake State Park up in Seneca County and Long Point State Park near Aurora in Cuyahoga County all were closed, I believe. Also, I think Myers Point in Lansing was closed and then some of the parks uh, like in Cuyahoga County and Union Springs uh, they were closed too because of the algae blooms. Well, I called the Finger Lake State Park's headquarters this morning, and good news, all three state park beaches in Cuyahoga Lake are now open. And that's, uh, that, like I mentioned, Tacanic Falls, Cuyahoga Lake, and Long Point State Parks. They've been closed recently due to harmful blue-green algae blooms. If you want an update on, on swimming at uh, the state parks anyway, um, all of them, you can call 607-387-7041, 607-387-7041, or you can call the individual parks. You can look them up online or, they still have phone books? They make phone books anymore? Anyway, um, however, let's take a closer look at the algae. So, it lo well, first of all, it looks like the, the algae situation, at least for the time being, may be, may be uh, dissipating, at least in some of these areas. But um, let's take a look at, uh, what the DEC is going to show us about how to identify some of this, this, um, these harmful algal blooms. So I've got a few pictures of what, it, what they may look like. They may look like parallel streaks, usually green, on the water surface. So that's one picture. Let's see what this one is. This is, um, it may look like green dots, clumps, or globs on the water surface. And the next one, oh my gosh, this is, um, HABs may look like blue, green, or white spilled paint on the water surface. So this is weird looking stuff. Not something you're used to. Here it is. It may, may okay, may make the water look bright green or, or like pea soup. So, um, so those are the, um, that's the blue green algae. Green algae, ordinary green algae can look like floating rafts on the water, but they do not produce harmful toxins. So this is what we're used to seeing on the lake, this globby stuff. And uh, can it look like bubbling scum on the water and maybe entangled with other plant material. Again, they don't produce toxins. So this is just our normal old green algae that's in the lake. And if you get some of this uh, stringy or hairy-like, or what they say, tumbleweed, uh, or in the water on the lake bottom, they don't produce toxins. This is green algae once again, so you can compare that to this this other gloppy looking stuff. Uh, much finer. Look, this is all the blue green. And then here are green algae. It's not quite so deeply green it looks like anyway. And the other stuff is more deep, deeper green, I guess maybe you could say blue green. Um, cyanobacteria. Not good. So, um, but all the all those parks are open now. I don't know about Myers. That might be open. And of course, the the gorges are open as well. The gorge swimming, at least at Robert Treeman State Park, the gorge swimming is is been open. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. And uh, Buttermilk Falls on the weekends has been open at least till th uh, until Labor Day. And I don't know if they'll extend it beyond that. I think one year they did. Once again, this is Walk in the Park. Walk in the Park TV is my website where you can see all all my episodes. So uh, I've got, this is episode 173, Ithaca, New York, Pub Public Access Television, Pegasus, which stands for Public Educational Government Access System. So it's our local, locally produced by volunteers. So now we're going to go talk about swimming in our gorges. And this is a very sad story. This was taken, uh, this picture was taken from the Ithaca Voice on August 5th, uh, which is last Saturday. And the quote is, the swimmer who drowned Saturday in Fall Creek. So there was a swimmer who drowned. 
was an incoming freshman to Cornell, the university has confirmed. After a five-hour search Saturday, New York State police divers recovered the body of Winston Perez Ventura, who went swimming and did not resurface, police said. Perez Ventura planned to study architecture. So, And he actually got quite a bit of uh, publicity before he came here, and Cornell was very excited about having him attend because he was, a, I think, a Dominican Republic. Uh, he was born in Dominican Republic, so he was an immigrant, and he was the first member of his family to go to college, and look what happened. So, very, very sad story. These are the divers, I guess, looking for him at the base of the Cape Falls. I guess that's where they found him. I couldn't really get a clear um, uh, understanding of that. But uh, so now we're going to look at. Um, okay, this is actually a picture in Buttermilk Falls State Park and some of the pools up there. And uh, this is a ranger a few years ago friend of mine, Rich Dunham, who is um, reading the riot act to some swimmers in the pools there because uh, people like to dive into the pools and they're very inviting, but um, they are dangerous and from time to time there's a tragedy, an injury, or even a death. Um, in fact, just a couple of weeks ago, or just, well, last month, there was a um, young man who had to be um, uh, hauled out of there because he broke his leg when he jumped into one of these pools. And then people jump off the cliffs. And I remember about 20 years ago, there was a, uh, oh, an 18-year-old boy from Elmira, just graduated from high school, who, um, who jumped into that pool and um, hit his head on a rock coming up and went down, drowned. And, that, and, and, and Rich had to, um, had to deal with that situation, which was pretty hard on him. He'd been to Vietnam and, and seen enough dead bodies. Um, so you go to the swimming area at Treman. And at Buttermilk on the weekends, lower down at the lower Buttermilk, and you got lifeguards there. You can swim in the pool there, and so forth. Um, it's great. It's one of the most charming swimming areas in the state. It has been closed from time to time during the summer after the heavy rains. Again, when it's looked like this, this was actually in May before the swimming area opened. But I'm sure it looked like this on some other occasions after our heavy, heavy rains. So, um, so we're going to uh, take a look at a video here about. Uh, we take a look at a video about gorge safety that Cornell has put together. It's a new edition of a video they made a few years ago, and let's so let's go there. We don't exactly know what happened, but Nate started panicking and he struggled. Uh, I tried to go in and save him, but so he was starting to pull me down and stuff too, so that kind of failed and we called the police there too late. Um, yeah, that's all kind of a blur because it happened really fast. We don't quite know what's going on underneath the surface of the water. And it turns out in the bottom of that bedrock, there are holes. And when water flows over a hole, you get an eddy or a recirculation eddy. But what these eddies do is they trap fluid and whatever's in that fluid in that eddy. Even the strongest swimmers go across and that eddy's strong enough, it will spin you down and in. And once you're in the eddy, I'm afraid you're another statistic for the gorges of Ithaca. So don't become a statistic. Stay out of swimming in the gorges. For a swimmer who doesn't understand or doesn't know what these gorges are capable of, the hidden beauty also has a very hidden danger to it. As you probably saw in a video a few minutes ago, I can tell you what it's like under there being a rescue diver. They get 
distracted by the beauty of these gorges. They think it'd be a fun place to swim. But there's two hidden dangers under there. The currents can take you. They can suck you back up underneath the falls. When we pull a body out, it's horrible. It's tragic. And for the parents and the members of this community, it's extremely heartbreaking for us all. I've seen enough over the years. And our goal is to strive to have no more of these accidents within these gorges. We are the university's ambassadors to the gorges. I love showing people these parts of our incredible campus and teaching them how to use them safely. So you should be aware of the dangers. Remember, it's illegal to swim in the gorges and you should always stay on the trails or in designated areas because violating these rules could put you and your rescuers in serious danger. That said, there are plenty of great ways to enjoy the fresh air and stunning scenery of the gorges. I personally love going for a run around Beebe Lake or just relaxing in nature with a good book. Don't forget canoeing! But you're not limited to the gorges around Cornell campus. With a short bus ride, you can find more amazing scenery and safe swimming spots at Buttermilk, Taganic Falls, and Freeman Park. Okay, well, that pretty well summed it up. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that, uh, especially at the base of waterfalls, there are plunge pools. Sometimes the plunge pools are deeper than the waterfall is high. And their, their depth varies because the high water times, the floods wash in boulders and gravel. And then boulders and gravel, they, they, they get rolled around and they act, you know, these are like hard, um, you know, granite-like rocks that have been brought in by the glaciers thousands of years ago from places like Canada and the Adirondacks. They're much harder than our local shales and sandstones. And they polish out these deep potholes underneath the, uh, the waterfall, the base of the waterfall. So they're called, they're called plunge pools at the base of waterfalls. And, um, or you can call them potholes if you want. In any case, they're very dangerous, especially when the water is high, for a couple of reasons. One is they tend to be sort of flower pot shaped and uh, so when you get down underneath they actually slope around and make a you know make a sort of a flower pot and you can get under there and get trapped by the water that's pounding into the pool or you can come up and hit your head on a rock and that's what happened to that boy I was uh, des describing uh, about 20 years ago in that pool in buttermilk and uh, the other thing is that just the force of the water itself creates that recirculation like was shown in that video um, and you, the, in that uh, graphic that's showing the, the two young men getting pulled under that waterfall into that pool and sets this sort of back current under the waterfall, sort of a um, know, backwash that, that uh, you can't get out of. And uh, as that uh, young man described, he tried to save his friend, he couldn't get him out of there and his friend was, gonna, he was actually going to pull him in. So um, those pools can be dangerous, and especially in this kind of weather. So well, speaking about the swimming again here, of course it, it gets closed when it's like that and they have to clear out the, all the debris that's washed in. But the other thing, sometimes they're closed for water quality too if, the, uh, if there's a lot of coliform bacteria. So they test it every day before they open up the swimming area. So, but uh, it's, it's open now as far as I know. So, well, we got a couple of minutes left, so I'm going to show you a couple of videos of gorges. Um, this time we're going to go to Watkins Glen. I've got a couple of short videos there. Let me see what this one's, oh, not quite two minutes. And that's what happened to it here. Anyway, it's uh, Great Cracks, I think is the name of it. So let's take a look at this one. Across the gorge in Glen Alpha is an impressive cliff bisected by enormous vertical fractures. Stone has fallen from slots between these joints, as they are called. Joints are caused by compression and expansion acting on rock layers, and they are found in rocks throughout the world. Quarries often take advantage of natural jointing patterns in rock formations 
to remove large blocks of stone. The layered rocks of Watkins Glen and of central New York State were intensely compressed 200 to 300 million years ago when Africa and North America collided during a time when the world's continents were aggregating into a supercontinent. The collision resulted in the rise of the Appalachian Mountains to the south and east and the Allegheny Plateau in New York and northern Pennsylvania. The huge joints in Glen Alpha and elsewhere in Watkins Glen are testimony to tremendous forces exerted on the region during that time. You can see other evidence of joints and thus the mountain building period that raised these rock layers high above sea level so long ago. Look around you and you will notice some very flat vertical cliff surfaces. These occur where rock has fallen away from one side of a joint, exposing the flat surface of the remaining face of the fracture. Follow that flat surface back to where it joins the rest of the gorge wall and you will see a joint. You will pass many more joints during the rest of your walk. Okay, so a little section of uh, geology there. That's actually um, the, um, the narrative in there is from my book, A Walk Through Watkins Glen, Waters, Sculpture, and Stone. So I've been working on a video companion to it, so hopefully we'll get that out by next season. When there's going to be a big uh, reopening of the main entrance of the park, as several million dollars have been spent to, being spent to uh, um, completely redo the main entrance to Watkins Glen State Park, and it's going to be really nice. Taking all the cars out of there and putting in planting is going to restore it to what it was like back, oh, maybe almost 100 years ago and um, it's going to be a really pretty place. Plus, there's going to be more interpretation in the gorge. So, um, the, I'm just going to finish off here, show you a couple of, uh, this one picture here. This is in that same area of uh, so-called Glen Alpha. It's the first section of gorge when you get up out of the, uh, uh, the main entrance and you go up through the, what's called the entrance tunnel. And there's waterfalls back in there. And on the right, you can see a waterfall in the middle, and that's called Minnehaha Falls, and there's a story behind that, but I won't tell you now. And then way in the back is Cavern Cascade, one of the two waterfalls you can walk behind. And on the left is a 19th century picture of the same thing. And if you look in the back, you can see a, um, a staircase, because now there's a tunnel called a spiral tunnel that comes up through the cliff behind that waterfall, just after you've gone behind the waterfall in the back, um, and then comes out above. Well, back then, you had to ascend by two or three different staircases. Well, that's all I got time for, and I thank you for joining me if it uh, walk in the park and uh, turn off this screen and go outside and enjoy our August weather.